Welcome to Journalism Corner. This is episode six. This is uh, a new segment in the Manage Madrid podcast where we go over some questions about journalism specifically, which, again, journalism in this segment means a lot different than kind of the journalism advice you hear at the mainstream. And that is going through some of the nitty gritty, the details, some of the nuances, some of the things that mainstream won't tell you in terms of sharpening your your skills and being able to analyze match reports and ma- analyze games, bring a unique set, unique set of eyes to the content you're watching, distinguishing yourself from other up and coming aspiring writers, journalists, whatever, probably pulling ahead even if you're doing it right than some of the people you see on TV, and just kind of knowing how to connect, how to talk to people, how to know what to focus on, how to find time, how to find energy. Um, how to ask the right questions, how to kind of sort out other aspects of your life in order to be able to become a journalist. All things that we have covered in past segments or are planning on covering and touching on more in future segments. This segment, this week, here's the question that came in that we chose to take for this. The question is, which form has a better, larger audience? Is it football anecdotes or tactical analysis? Um, now to extend this question, because that was the end of the question, I would also just kind of add a third option and that is transfer rumors. So here's the interesting thing about all this and, and people will kind of complain about clickbait and sometimes and, and all this content that we put out and other, other places put out and they complain about clickbait and rumors and transfers. The reality of this industry is that 80% of traffic and revenue comes from the 20% of, let's put it politely, nonsense of just rehashing transfer rumors, putting out reports, and um, and and click, putting clickbaity titles. So let me explain this a little bit. Um, those are important for everybody, every paper, because they pay the bills. Um, they pay the staff. They, you know, it makes the industry possible. And it's not necessarily the, the fault of those publications. It's the fault of the consumer because that is the, what the consumer is interested in. The consumer is you. It's me. It's anyone else who is interested in this stuff. And generally speaking, if you're a football fan or a fan of any sport, you kind of get your, your hit, the, the high, the adrenaline, the the overdose of of just consuming transfers and wanting to know where this player is going, wanting to know how we can sell X player who you don't like or wanting how, how we can sign X player that you do like that can replace X player that you don't like. All of that stuff gets us collectively high. It, um, it makes us click on things, and that is the fortunate or unfortunate reality of this industry. So let me go back another layer. Clickbait... Um, is important for many publications because for for a reason but maybe you're not um you're not maybe used to hearing in that the other 20% of traffic comes from much deeper football analysis that 20% to me is as important as the other 80% May, mostly because one that's what I'm interested in I'm interested in the kind of the deeper analysis and second of all it's because that's what creates the cult like following um would we like 100% of our consumers to be patrons and to subscribe to our podcast? Of course we would. Um, now, we have a lot of listeners on our podcast. Uh, we have, and then we have a percentage of those listeners. So here go, here's how it goes. We have a percentage of our readers listening to our podcast, and then we have a smaller percentage of our listeners who subscribe to us on Patreon, who love our podcast enough that they want to hear it three, four more times a week. And to be clear, there are barriers in people who... Who, who who do love our podcast and aren't patrons and some of those barriers are just in, kind of in their head a little bit and they're and obviously they're they're purely financial but some of those financial barriers if you break them down are just silly because maybe it's because if it's three dollars again is there many people in the world who who can't afford three dollars a month chances are if you have internet and you have access to football and you have access to list to a phone to listen to those podcasts you have the three dollars a month it's just that sometimes you just can't justify three dollars because three dollars in your mind paying for anything um that you like is is a bit outlandish even though you're paying maybe three dollars on on a fancy starbucks drink every day or even though maybe you're spending maybe 
hundreds of dollars on alcohol if you're going out every night. Again, I'm not I'm not going to generalize and put a sweeping generalization over all this, but I'm saying that there's always some of these barriers are sometimes in our head. So to, again, to break it down, percentage of readers are listeners, percentage of podcast listeners who listen to the free show every week are also patrons. So once you get to the deeper analysis, um, that's what the patrons are usually really interested in. So to me, that's important because the cult-like following, even though it's a smaller group, that's all you need. You don't need one million. Um, you don't really need one million followers. You need 1,000 true followers. This is something that may, um, that if you listen to the Tim Ferriss podcast, maybe you've already heard of. 1,000 true followers is far more important than one million followers that are kind of generic and they're not going to necessarily take a journey with you and... And maybe they're not necessarily, and, and those those are the listeners and and consumers that are really interested and are fans of what you do. So those are to me that's where our twenty percent is, and that's where that's what's important. I think that that now that number of one thousand will expand greatly over the next coming years because we're just getting started. We have a roadmap. We have a really really big vision for this, but the ratio percentage will likely not change much because our audience would get will get bigger on managing Madrid. And our podcast listeners and our patrons, that number will get bigger too. But the ratio will probably re remain the same Same in that it's 80-20. So kind of just to answer this question, again, to remind you what the question was, which form has a better, larger audience? And is it football anecdotes or tactical analysis? Um, and then a third option, which I added, is it the transfers and stuff? It goes one, transfers, and then two, I think tactical analysis is better, better than football anecdotes. Um, and, and part of the reason for that is because people are more interested in current state of affairs than they are in stories outside of the actual football they're seeing. Um, it's part of the reason why match analysis and tactical reviews and previews are much more popular than, uh, let's say, football anecdotes about a story of a player that maybe is not time sensitive or it's maybe it's about the history of the club or history of a player or uh, they're overarching their life and stuff that will usually not get as many hits as the actual match analysis so summarizing this all as best as best as i can because we're about to actually record the post game show for this uh for this uh game today which which you know you've already heard in part one but um tactical analysis is second to transfer rumors, and then football anecdotes is third. But your true followers, where you will be able to um, to create a niche and create, uh, I, I suppose, a a following of of highly highly um, highly informative individuals who really really want to take a dive into the deeper analysis side of things. To me, that's creating that that from the twenty percent is much more important than the eighty percent of revenue and traffic that will come through naturally through clicks and clickbaits. Oh, so this is what I wanted to say about clickbaits really quickly. Um, the, the reason why clickbaits are more important than you think, and and this applies to the twenty percent. The twenty percent of football analysis, um, people won't actually click on um, unless you give it. An enticing enough headline. So I think to me, sometimes clickbait is demonized a little bit, but the reality is on Managing Madrid, we can put out a 3,000, 5,000 word article really, really diving deep into the tactical nuances of, of games and trying to put something out different than you won't see on ESPN or, or Mark or us or whatever. But no one will click on that if we don't at least entice them a little bit. Um, and often creating that that headline is a bit challenging, and we will we will we will be more than happy and and live with the complaints of it being a little bit of clickbaity because we know that our job is beyond writing that analysis. We actually have to entice the reader or listener, or whoever, to actually go and click on it. And if we write the best article of all time and the headline is not clickbaity enough, there's it's going to go to waste. So forgive some of the clickbait and be maybe understanding of of the shoes of the publications. Obviously, there's lines that publications shouldn't cross if the article headline is completely misleading and it's just filled with ads and it doesn't provide you value. But if it's an article that does provide you with tremendous value that you wouldn't see anywhere, forgive the clickbait a little bit, okay? So I hope that gave you an insight about um, where traffic comes from, what traffic is important, and, and clickbaits and stuff like that. All right, enjoy the rest of your week. As always, if you want 
to if you want me to cover anything specifically, Kion at KionSubani.com. I'm always open to suggestions. There's a lot of little details and things we can talk about in the journalism world, specifically sports journalism. And also, if you're looking for very, very detailed one-on-one mentorship where we dive deep, we do sessions with me personally. Again, you can email me, Kion at KionSubani.com. Thanks. Take care. Hala marik.